I've heard about a case that originated in Russia, if I remember right. Russian Navy soldiers found themselves confronted with a USO, an unidentified submarine object. And not only that, they also found themselves in a situation where they were confronted with a few ETs that crossed their paths underwater. I found this really interesting. So my question is, what do we know about USOs? Uh, yeah, USOs are pretty interesting. Uh, they're pretty much the same as a UFO, but you can't really call a UFO, you know, a flying object if it's in the water. But these objects do have the ability to go into the water and out of the water. And uh, once we see a UFO inside the water, we call this a USO. And these are seen all over the world in our oceans, in our lakes, in our rivers, even in small reservoirs. And there hasn't been a lot of attention paid to them over the years. Not until recently have people become more interested in them. And there are certain areas on our planet which seem to have a lot of activity. You mentioned a case in Russia. I'm guessing that that took place in Lake Baikal, which is the world's deepest freshwater lake. And there have been a number of instances where people have seen USOs in Lake Baikal, and not only objects, but actual humanoids. Uh, they were described as quite tall, uh, eight feet, I believe, and uh, swimming around in divers' suits at high speed, and clearly not human. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we have reports of USOs stretching back many hundreds of years. I think one of the earliest comes from the explorer, Christopher Columbus, who while traveling to the United States, well, America then, uh, saw an object in the water come out of the water. He and his whole crew saw this. But now there are many hundreds, well, more, more like thousands of cases of these objects coming in and out of the water. And just based on that alone, I suspect that our oceans are filled with these objects, uh, probably in large numbers, because I personally have investigated cases involving not one or two objects or even 10 or 20, but we're talking hundreds. What do USOs look like? Could this be any UFO we see around like the Tic Tacs or the triangle shaped ones? Are they different types of USOs? Yeah, there's a large variety of UFO shapes. Uh, most common, I, I would say, are your classic saucer. But we also see spheres, egg-shaped objects, cigar-shaped objects, kind of like the Tic Tac, uh, manta ray, V-shaped. And we see the same variety with USOs, mm -hmm. though I will say that most USOs are your classic saucer shape. Uh, circular objects. It's hard to tell because often people don't get a real good look at them. They will come under their boat and all they can really see is a bright round light. Uh, but there are cases of submariners, people in submarines encountering these things. Many cases from Navy ships and other military uh, ships. Uh, Personally, I've done a lot of research off the coast of Southern California here in the U.S., and I've cataloged, documented about 150 cases in one area, which is the Santa Catalina Channel. This is uh, quite a deep area of water, about, uh, well, not quite two kilometers, but a kilometer and a half, almost a mile deep, about 5,000 feet. And uh, there are, I've also got cases from all over the world, really. <laughs> People have contacted me. Uh, there was a case in Arkansas in Lake Hamilton, another in a lake in Florida, Lake Nikusuki, 
uh, another case in what we call the Bermuda Triangle. Mm -hmm. But most of the cases I've personally investigated are right off the coast of Southern California. And in fact, I wrote a book about it called Undersea UFO Base because there's some pretty compelling evidence, I think, that there are perhaps undersea bases, not only here off the coast of California, but around the world. I do know that the eastern coast of the U.S. has a lot of activity, Puerto Rico as well, and other areas. Um, the ocean would be my first choice, too, if I had to hide from someone. No one will ever find you there. and. What do we know about the crew of these objects? Are we talking about separate spe a separate species or could we, could this be the grace as well? Uh, we don't really know a whole lot about the crews of these USOs, the occupants, because often USOs are simple sightings. They don't usually involve an onboard experience uh or ets coming out extraterrestrials though there are a few cases uh and what we see is a wide variety of beings some describe grays some describe the mantids praying mantis some describe human looking i'll just quote a few cases for you where i do know of humanoids there was one case which occurred in the late 1960s i believe i think it was 67 but i'd have to look it up to be sure but i do know it involved a navy officer a former pilot and his brother who were standing next to lake casitas lake casitas is an artificial lake it was created by by building a dam this is located in southern california along the coast And they were standing by this fairly large lake uh, in the daytime when they suddenly heard a loud sound of splashing water. And they turned and looked and saw this very large object coming up out of the water very quickly. And all this water was flowing off of it and into the lake. That's what they heard. And looking up, they could see it was a large object shaped like a kind of a triangle, a cone with a dome on top. And there were little portholes, little windows going all the way around. And looking through the windows, uh, the witnesses could see a face looking out at them. <laughs> and it looked to be like a normal human male. They couldn't see a lot of detail, pretty much only a silhouette. But he did have binoculars, so he lifted up his binoculars and looked and got a pretty close-up look at this object, which was glowing bright orange. And very quickly, this object darted away, and he actually did manage to capture a photograph of it, which doesn't show a whole lot other than this object kind of blurry moving off. But it's an excellent case involving humanoids. Uh, there's another case which was really quite peculiar in which there was a fishing boat off the coast of Southern California again. And uh, they came upon what they first thought was a submarine on the surface. But it was quite odd because it, it didn't look like a normal submarine. It had a very strange structure to it. And they saw six or seven figures on it wearing what looked like sort of jumpsuits. And uh, they thought it was quite odd because as soon as this, they saw the submarine, uh, the men scrambled inside the object, and this object came right towards their boat, almost as if to collide with it, to ram it, which is not normal behavior for a submarine. And not only that, it was uh, very quiet. It could, didn't hear much noise coming from it. And it moved very quickly and didn't create much of a wave at all, or you know, no swell or no wave in the ocean. And uh, they reported it to the Coast Guard. Uh, they felt this was important and the Coast Guard should know. And 
the military became involved and they showed these gentlemen various types of submarines silhouettes of submarines such as you know could this have been a german u-boat a japanese submarine a russian submarine a u.s submarine and all the pictures that they saw did not match so they could not figure out what this object was ufo researchers heard about this and speculated that it might have been actually a uso and uh, one final case involving humanoids uh, was very interesting uh object had landed right on the beach so this might not be a uso particularly but it was right on the beach there uh, this is in playa del rey again southern california this is where i've done most of my research so that's why all these cases are here but yeah they're all over the world but in this case three gentlemen in separate cars were driving along the pacific coast highway when all three of their cars failed all the engines stopped at the same time and they got out of their cars and were trying to figure out why all three cars had stopped for no reason and they saw this object on the beach and they approached and as they uh watched two strange figures came out of this object they were dressed very strangely in shiny black suits with belts and had kind of greenish skin uh weird eyes but looked basically human or humanoid i should say and they started speaking in a strange language and i guess telepathically asked them various questions like what time is it and where are we and these sort of things and it was a very brief meeting these figures got back in this craft which took off straight up and at this point the their cars started normally and they went on their way but in confirmation of this incident was on that day the nearby military base had reported seeing many ufos and actually chased them in their jets and at the same time the local police stations received hundreds of calls from people reporting ufos so that was good confirmation of this particular incident what do we know about their intentions any speculations uh yeah i think we have a pretty good idea on the intentions of ets on you know what's often called the alien agenda mm. uh you know having myself talk to hundreds of people and certainly followed the research of many of the other investigators i think we do know why they're here i think they're largely here to study us and learn uh, i think they're very much concerned about our use of nuclear materials nuclear weapons because there are many cases where they are hovering over nuclear missile sites uh ships that are powered using nuclear material uh nuclear power stations there was a very very interesting uso case off the eastern coast of the united states involving a submarine this took place in 1971 it's called the us s clamagor the submarine and i talked to a gentleman by the name of ray sachs who was an electrician's mate on the clamagor and on the evening in question in 1971 the clamagor was heading up the east coast on the surface of the water at about 12 knots uh, this was at night when suddenly a glowing uso came zooming in from the stern from behind at about 100 knots which is much faster than our submarines can move and this uso came right up next to the submarine now this is very dangerous uh, seagoing vessels do not come up next to each other because there's a strong danger of collision the closest they will normally get is a quarter of a mile and this object whatever it was was right next to the submarine just maybe 100 meters away 50 meters and according to ray it was quite large 
that he couldn't see the object itself because it was underwater, but it was circular and it looked like a, you know, 30 meters across or so. Very bright white light, totally silent. And the commander of the USS Klamagor turned to Ray and asked him, what did the people in the sonar room see? Sonar can, of course, detect vehicles underwater. And the gentleman in the sonar room said that they did not see anything on their instruments. They could not detect this object at all. But it was very clear something was there because it paced the submarine for the next 15 minutes, during which time many of the major high-ranking officers came up on deck because they wanted to see what this thing was with their own eyes. And after about 15 minutes, this object darted off at about 80 knots in another direction and was gone. The second in command turns to the commander and says, Sir, how would you like me to record this in the logbook? And the commander says, Officers who record this kind of incident in the log do not move up in rank. <laughs> so uh, this was not recorded in the log books. And having talked to other people in the Navy who have had these kinds of incidents, this is not unusual. There is often no record, no written record of these incidents. So any estimate of how common these are is probably vastly underestimated, and we don't hear about most of these incidents. But what I find most interesting about this particular case is that the USS Klamagor at that time was carrying nuclear-tipped mm -hmm. torpedoes. So I think this sort of shows once again the ET's concern with nuclear power. So that's one of their agendas, but they're very concerned about uh, according to contactees, people who have been taken on board, they're given messages, and the ETs will usually warn them about not only our use of nuclear weapons, but about the way we are polluting our planet, about our war and aggression, about the greed and corruption and uh, unequal distribution of wealth. This is a major concern for them. They talk about our use of fossil fuels. Uh, again, concerned about us depleting resources and polluting our air and water. They seem to be very much interested in waking people up psychically. And by that, I mean developing their powers, their abilities of telepathy, precognition, astral travel, out-of-body experiences. Uh, remembering past lives, anything to do with spirituality. They want us to remember who we are, where we come from, and that we are not alone in this universe. That is a main agenda. They just want us to know that they are there. So I don't see any real evidence of them trying to take over or, you know, eat us for lunch or anything like that. Uh, there is a sort of a strong push uh, from government circles to promote an alien threat. Uh, but it's not true. There's no evidence that these guys are here to hurt us. They've been around for thousands of years, many thousands of years. If they wanted to take over our planet, they could easily do so. And they have not. That is not their agenda. Their agenda is to study us, to guide, to teach. There are many, many cases of them healing people, cases from all over the world, um, all across Europe, Russia, uh, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, England, US, South America. I have 300 cases of them healing people. That is also a major agenda. So it's pretty clear that these guys are not our enemies, they are our friends, uh, but are sort of waiting for us to grow up and to solve our own problems and uh, take care of ourselves because they can't do that for us.
we have to solve our own problems. I think if they are researchers, they choose the best place imaginable. There is such a variety of species down there and intelligent life as well, talking about dolphins or whales, etc. Is there any information out there that tells us something about an alternation between ETs and yeah, intelligent species like whales or dolphins? Like they took took them or or communicated with them? Uh, yeah, this is an interesting question because scientists have pretty much determined that dolphins and whales are quite intelligent. And for that matter, dogs have an incredible intelligence. Birds, they're finding out ravens. Yeah. Uh, we have gorillas, Coco the gorilla, who learns sign language. Mm -hmm. So scientists are finally accepting that many of the species on our planet are quite intelligent. And as far as ETs studying these animals, yes, we do see evidence of that. There are many, many cases where people have been taken on board a craft and seen what we would call a zoo, uh, but would probably be more akin to a, a animal husbandry centers uh, where they take on board animals and take care of them, like a preserve, much in the way we do. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of evidence of them communicating with dolphins or whales. Uh, but there is some evidence of this. I do know of one or two cases where people said that they have seen dolphins on board UFOs. And not to get too strange and out there with all this, but there are cases of Bigfoot as well. Uh, Bigfoot is, of course, a very large creature, eight feet tall, six to eight feet, sometimes 10 feet tall, seen throughout the world. There are many different types of Bigfoot and Sasquatch and wild men. And there are a good 100 or 200 cases in which people have seen UFOs and Bigfoot at the same time. Yes. But they'll have a sighting and Bigfoot will be running around. There are a few cases where people have actually seen Bigfoot going on board a UFO <laughs> or coming out of one or seeing, seeing one on board or seeing ETs walking around and there are Bigfoot in their presence. Uh, so it's quite possible there is a connection there and that Bigfoot are intelligent as humans are, are sentient beings. Uh, this is still a, a relatively new subject and we don't know a whole lot about ETs relationship with other species on our planet. And for that matter, we're still learning about our own species. I mean, it was just a hundred, two hundred years ago that wild gorillas yeah. were even discovered. We did not know about them. Uh, we're still finding new species, and that's what's really interesting about USOs, is because the oceans are still not fully explored. And I think the ETs, the USOs, know that we do not have the ability to travel into the deeper parts of the ocean with any real ease. And they are able to use our oceans as a good sort of hiding place and can stay down there and not be bothered by pesky humans and military and uh, people trying to you know, shoot at them <laughs> or what have you. So I am pretty sure there are large numbers of these objects in our oceans, undersea bases, and that they are studying us, and certainly, yeah, studying the animals as well. Let's go a little bit crazy right here. Since we talk about ETs underwater, it's said that the origin of the octopus might not be Earth. They might be an alien being because of their bizarre behavior and looks and genetics. I mean, they, if I remember right, I read that they can change their genetics. And yeah. I mean, look at an octopus, how strange it moves, how strange it acts. Uh, and octopus are are notorious for for the they, they are plain. They are plain. And plain is what mammals do. Because yeah. they learn from plain. They learn to 
where they fit in, you know, how to fit in and, and, and stuff like that. And yeah, it's, it's, it's unusual for invertebrates to play. So it's, he's a, it's, it's a very bizarre creature, the octopus. And it said, maybe they're from outer space. Yes, I've been watching uh, the recent scientific research on this. And zoologists and marine biologists are very much impressed by the octopus because it is so very different from all creatures on Earth. There's nothing quite like it. Uh, it does have genetics as we know it, as all creatures and all life on our planet do. And genetics between all things on our planet are really very similar. We have large strands of genes in any creature that are almost identical, whether it's celery or you know uh, bamboo or uh, an antelopes or giraffes or elephants or crocodiles or anything. In fact, a chimpanzee and human genetics are 98% identical. So our genetics across our planet are very much shared. Uh, the octopus is quite different. There's no creature that has eight legs other than the octopus. One huge eye, uh, the ability to change its color on its skin. Uh, is It can release ink out of its um, special organs and there's also been research into octopus intelligence. There was a recent award-winning documentary about a gentleman who made friends with an octopus and uh, found out that, yeah, it's quite intelligent. And there are lots of stories of people who have kept pet octopuses in their aquariums and taught them all kinds of tricks. from learning how to throw balls, you know, <laughs> fetch kind of, like with a dog. So yeah, octopuses are far more intelligent than we've previously thought. And finally, we have gotten proof of giant squid, not just little octopuses, but enormous, you know, krakens, uh, like yeah. uh, giant sea monsters, which are probably still out there. Uh, so yeah, scientists are now speculating that octopuses might not have come from Earth. And in fact, that's not the only creature on Earth that is baffling scientists. Another is the Venus flytrap, which is a, car a carnivorous plant, which is unlike most plants on this planet. And if you talk to contactees, uh, some of them have been told that we did not originate on this planet and that life did not originate on this planet. Uh, one lady I interviewed recently, she's the, she's the subject of my latest book, which is called Symmetry, a True UFO Adventure. And she's a fully conscious contactee. And she does not need hypnosis to recall her experiences. She's had a lifelong relationship with the ETs. And they told her flat out that there is life all over the universe, very similar, that everything carries genetics, and that life as we know it did not originate here on Earth. Originally, we lived on Mars. And they told her that giraffes, in particular, uh, were planted here uh, and did not originate anywhere near here. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't surprise me a bit that scientists are now starting to figure out that the species on our planet are far more interesting and different uh, than we previously thought. They're much more intelligent. They're much more aware. And human origins and origins of life on our planet, uh, the science we're looking at right now is pointing towards the strong possibility that uh, it did not originate here on this planet through a process of evolution as we think of it. Evolution is clearly real. We can see it happening before our eyes. Uh, but it, there's some strong questions raised about this and which I've said for years, because when I got involved in UFO research, there are many accounts of human looking ETs. And if there are ETs out there that look just like us, what does that say about human origins and 
for that matter, our relationship to the ETs. Why are all ETs humanoid? They all have arms and legs and eyes and a head. They all look very much like us. So this is a message many ETs get. Or I mean, many, pardon me, this is a message many contactees get. They will tell contactees, you are us, we are you, we are one. All life is similar. So yeah, <laughs> I find the very interesting that scientists are now sort of confirming what the contactees have been already told. You you um, mentioned the chimps, like um, it's known that humans and chimps share about ninety eight or ninety nine percent of their DNA, and but there's a big gap though in the looks and with the brains and how they act. We're so so far ahead of them and imagine for example grace let's say we share 99 or 98 percent dna with the grace and they're ahead of us imagine how far ahead of us they are how intelligent they might be crazy yeah yeah according to the contactees Uh, they are not a thousand years ahead of us. It's yeah. closer to a million. And that's almost impossible to even think about. Uh, they are extremely advanced. And this we can see with their craft, their ships, which can stop instantly, travel silently, uh, shrink in size, expand, uh, can outdistance anything we have move at thousands of miles per hour, can travel between star systems. We know their technology is incredibly advanced. So it appears that they themselves, spiritually speaking, are also very advanced and can do things that we are only beginning to discover, like levitation and telepathy and all these things that we consider supernatural or paranormal, yeah, but probably aren't. These are natural abilities, which we are only beginning to discover that we have as well. Uh, it's clear they are very advanced from us, but the more you, I think you research the subject, the more you realize how close our relationship is to them. And in fact, many contactees have been told that the greys do share our genetics and are in most ways what we would think of as human. Uh, they have the same basic genetic structure as do all humanoid beings throughout the universe, which is why we see this sort of template, this basic human form uh, in pr practically every contactee case. Uh, it's very interesting <laughs> genetics. Uh, There's still a lot that's not known. We've only recently sort of mapped out the human genome. And uh, we don't understand a lot of DNA. We, had co we called great strands of our genetics junk DNA because it appears to serve no purpose. Uh, they're now reversing their opinions about that. And uh, we don't understand you know, how DNA activates to create, say, an ear or an eye or whatever body part or organ, because it's the same genetics in every single part of your body, and yet it dials out differently. So we're just beginning to understand that. And now scientists are beginning to like grow ears on the backs of mice <laughs> or, yeah. you know, interbreed various creatures and create fluorescent cats or trees that glow, or all kinds of strange stuff. There are even rumors that they have crossed humans with chimpanzees. Yeah. Uh, the human Z, <laughs> I believe it's called. Um, I don't think this is officially accepted, but I do know for a fact that very extensive genetic research is going on uh, confidentially, undercover. We don't know most of what's being researched about 
human DNA. Uh, and I know there are many cases coming from whistleblowers out of areas like Area 51 in Nevada and other places where there is some very uh, strange research into genetics and that they are creating chimeras, you know, half human, half animal type creatures. So it should be very interesting to see how the whole field of genetics evolves. Certainly our understanding of it is growing by leaps and bounds right now. USOs and underwater creatures. I wonder how many legends about water creatures originated out of this subject. I mean, stories about mermaids, sirens, or other creatures. Hey, Poseidon, <laughs> the god of water and the seas. Mythology says that he lived in a kingdom underwater. Yeah. Yeah, there was a movie called The Abyss, which was quite popular, which I found very interesting because I wonder, you know, could there be some truth to that? There's the story of Jonah and the whale, where he was swallowed by a whale and, and survived for, I, I don't know how long it was. Was it three days or something? <laughs> uh, there is some speculation that perhaps that wasn't a whale at all. And that was a USO. Uh, so this could very well be. And uh, if you look into the history of sea monsters, uh, such as giant sea serpents and the kraken, <laughs> and mermaids and all of these things uh, there's some very compelling stories there so it's quite possible that some of these beings or creatures that people were seeing throughout the centuries are not myths are quite real and in fact there are modern day accounts of creatures like sea serpents and giant octopus and squid and creatures that we have yet to identify And in fact, this is one of the cutting edges of uh, life on Earth, marine biology, because that is where we are discovering the most new species on a yearly basis. Uh, so it is really amazing when we send down these unmanned submersibles to very deep levels of the ocean and are finding all kinds of creatures that we had no idea existed. And uh, I'm guessing some we've probably found some stuff <laughs> that is not being released publicly. Uh, I cannot say that for sure, but I do have some whistleblower reports of uh, strange creatures and strange uh, artificial structures, like cities or bases uh, being found underwater. And I do know that And this is not in the public record, but comes from contactees uh, that we have our own undersea bases. The military has constructed undersea bases. So it's not just the ETs doing this. We ourselves do have done this to, to a limited degree. There's a lot going on in our oceans that we in the general public do not know about. So if we can do it, they can do it anyways so they're more advanced than, than we are and yeah that's a great topic usos i love talking about usos yeah what's amazing is some of these objects not only go into the water and come out but they're moving at like a thousand miles per hour yeah you know off, often they'll be you know this is underwater sometimes it's slow often it is somewhat slow but there are uh, Good, good number of cases where people see these things underwater and they are darting around at very high speed. So they must have some kind of a force field or a way of moving that fast. And in fact, uh, I know from talking to some Navy guys that we now have submarines, which they've been able to increase their speed by electrifying the hull and uh, sort of making an electric field around our own submarines, which pushes away the water and allows these craft to move much more quickly, which could be how these USOs are doing it. So UFOs, USOs are what we would call trans-medium vehicles, meaning they can travel through the air, 
They can travel through the water. And get this, there are many cases, quite a few, in which these objects are seen going into the ground, <laughs> right into the earth. And it's as if the earth opens up and swallows them because there's no crash. There's no debris. There's no visible tunnel there. Uh, and I've talked to some contactees who have been inside UFOs when these happen. And I don't know what you would call a UFO in the ground, <laughs> a UEO, an unidentified <laughs> earth object. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but this is how advanced uh, these guys are. And uh, we really have no idea what's going on, not only in our oceans, but in the ground beneath our feet. Yeah, maybe they dematerialize or maybe the ground dematerializes. So it's it's like a, like an entrance. It's... Yeah, well, well, we've seen that they do have the ability to render solid objects permeable. Because when a person is taken on board, there's a, a craft, a UFO hovering overhead. It sends down a beam of light and pulls them out of their bed through the ceiling, through the roof. <laughs> Or through a closed window. Yeah. So they have lights, you know, electro their, their understanding and use of the electromagnetic spectrum is far beyond our own. And we are quickly, you know, progressing on this with our own lasers. Mm -hmm. We do now have lasers that can levitate objects. We've we discovered x-rays, which can look inside through objects. I personally investigated a case where a gentleman said that they have sensing devices which can see through people's roofs and walls. Uh, and we know we can already do this with infrared uh, scopes. So it should come as no surprise. I mean, we now have ways of lighting up metal so that it will release visible light. Uh, and There is also cases where we're able to turn solid objects transparent, you know, a, an opaque metal electrified will become transparent. Mm. There's some research on this, which is pretty much undercover at this point, but stories are starting to leak out. So we are beginning to understand some of this ET technology, but they are still so, so far advanced from us that they have all kinds of abilities of things that they can do with light. It's crazy. Preston, I could go on for hours and I have so many more questions, but let's wrap this up for today. Thank you for taking the time always. I appreciate it. Really, I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks, Daniel. It's always a pleasure. I love talking about this stuff. So yeah, uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Me too. 